ಋತಿ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರು ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವತ್ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತೇ ನಮಃ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಪಾರ್ಥಾಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರಥಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿ ಭಗವತಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾದಶಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವದ್ವೇಷಿ ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವರುಣೇಂದ್ರ ರುದ್ರ ಮರುತ ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈ ಸಾಂಗಪದ ಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಸಾಮಗಾಧ್ಯಾನಾವಸ್ಥಿತ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ಯಾಂತಂ ನ ವಿದುಸುರಸುರಗಣ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ so we were uh, recapitulating the first six chapters of the bhagavad gita and the reason for doing that is because the predominant primary topic of these six chapters is is the tvam pada vichara ha tvam pada vichara so in the mahavakya tat tvam asi there are three portions one is tat tat means ishvara and then tvam is the jiva jiva you self me the individual who has aspirations who has who goes through experiences and who wants wants something and uh, wants moksha and so that is jiva tvam and then asi asi is the grand equation between the jiva and ishvara and so we said the first six chapters predominantly refers to the tvam pada you jiva and so we were reviewing the chapters and we started started looking at the fourth chapter where having taught sankhya yoga in chapter 2 and karma yoga the means to gain the qualification to to pursue sankhya yoga which is karma yoga then he talks about the teaching itself how the teaching came about and that krishna is not teaching anything new that is the message there and he introduces himself as mr avatara krishna and 
then he says uh, what is avatara briefly he talks about avatara but uh, yada yada hi dharma se etc he talks about that very famous shloka <clears throat> and uh, there we saw that the avatara purushaha is a pratibhashika shariram we saw that so means uh, it is not the vyavaharika shariram that you and i have it is different pratibhasikam and also that janma the birth of an avatara is not a uh, it is not a bhautika janma it is abhautika it is not put together it is not put together by karma it is put together ajopi san abhyayatma bhutanam ishwaropi san prakritim swam adhishtaya sambhavami atma mayaya so ishwara having full mastery over everything including maya and he says i i i come into being like that he says like you create the dream just like the dream comes and you don't plan to have a dream and uh, there is no past before the dream just comes just like that ishwara appears okay that that idea was introduced in the fourth chapter in the beginning and uh, <clears throat> and again the theme is similar so this kartritvam of the jiva and uh, then sanyasa and jnanam all these things how they are connected is again given here and uh, so in 19th if you look at uh, shloka number 19 yasya sarve samarambaha काम संकल्प वर्जिता एंड ज्ञान आग्नि दग्ध कर्माण सो लाइक दैट इज इज सो रेफरिंग टू कर्तृत्व सो दग्ध कर्माण ऑल कर्मास आर गॉन मींस द कर्तृत्व इज रिमूव्ड द द द अ सुपरफिशियल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ कर्मा बीइंग रिमूव्ड मींस व्हाट आई हैव टू कीप बीइंग बोर्न अगेन एंड अगेन so that i can exhaust exhaust all my karma that is the idea that is a that is a superficial idea but then there is so much karma karma itself was generated because of my birth only and because of the karma i have performed so all the karmas are there and now it is going to get exhausted by my karmas it's not possible not possible because i am constantly accumulating karma also so if you ask the question what happens after a life during a particular life at the end of a life and compare the karma before the life began and at the end of the life what happened to the karma this is the amount of papa karma go up go down in the amount of punya karma go up or go down if somebody asks the question what will you say suppose you say oh the person was very philanthropic giving sacrifices life for everything that means his punya karma went up dramatically dramatically we don't know punya karma went up okay we say dramatically percentage wise we don't know and papa karma what happened so like this if you start asking it's uh, most likely karma keeps going up either papa karma goes up or punya karma goes up and of course it also gets exhausted punya karma gets exhausted also so we cannot say and so infinite number of janmas because every janma why did i get this janma because i had a past janma that karma it was caused in a, in the all uh, past janmas why did i get the past janma well because i had karma etc if you go there is no end to that and therefore we grow out of that superficial idea and say the kartritvam the doership is the critical critical thesis here amazing it is and uh, that has to be given up so here krishna is saying doing should not be given up doership has to be given up this is where arjuna's confusion right giving up doing is great because in india people sanyasa sanyasa gives up all duties uh, of course activities like eating etc one cannot give up and uh, but the the, the 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 vedic society is such that uh, a person is is uh, 
given the right to perform duties. So, Grahastha Ashrama means duties are there. And uh, so, sannyasa takes away all the duties that are there. And so, that giving up of duties is very much uh, alive in our culture. And so, Arjuna knows that. And so, he wants to give up all duties. And he says, giving up duties is not what is being talked about. Uh, you can give up duties if you want to. But then, giving up kartritvam is what is important. And that and that can happen through jnana yoga and that can happen only through karma yoga and therefore hey arjuna continue to do what you are doing except the big difference and what is the difference the attitude of karma yoga attitude of ishvarapana buddhi and prasada buddhi and then time will definitely come <coughs> like that <coughs> like that uh, krishna was teaching and an important shloka, number 18. Karmanya karma yaf pashyet, akarmani cha karma yaha. The one who sees actionlessness in action. I hope you recall all these things. And one who sees action in actionlessness. So like this went round and round in one or two classes. And... Uh, that person, sa buddhiman manushyeshi, that also he says, hey, that person is a wise person among all people. And uh, sa yuktaha kritsna karma krit, like that he says. Kritsna karma krit, look at that word. Very interesting. So, one who has done all the karma that has to be done. That means one who has put a full stop at the end. A big full stop is there. And how is that possible? When in the third chapter, he already says, Nahi kasit api jatu karma kriti. Nobody can even stop doing karma for even for a second, for a moment. And when he said that, this seems contradictory. Kritsna karma krit seems contradictory. Well, it appears contradictory if you think of karma as uh, giving up, I mean, sannyasa as giving up action itself, but giving up doership, it is possible. So, Jnana Agni Dagna Karmanam. And uh, this shloka is important. And uh, Shankaracharya gives some comments on this shloka quite a bit. And he also does Purva Paksha Siddhanta. So, he poses questions. He plays the role of a Purva Pakshi. And then uh, Purva Pakshi says, What is this? Seeing karma in akarma and seeing akarma in karma is very confusing. Is that, uh, something is wrong. That's what Purva says. This can't be so. And, uh, and then he says things like, uh, no, the whole world knows karma is karma, action is action. No, action is no action. I think everybody knows that. Everybody agrees with that. And uh, mother always says, the son, hey, you're sleeping. No action. I need to see some action. You know, <laughs> school is there, you know. Uh, action in action. We all know this. And uh, all this, you know, like that Purupakshi says, Siddhanti, Shankara gives an example. Beautiful example he gives. He says, Navi, Navi Gachantyam. And then the person is moving in a boat. Okay. Tatastheshu, Stiteshu, Nageshu, Yatha, Yatha. Gati Darshan. So he says, you are moving in a boat and along the, uh, close to the shore. And then you are moving. And he says, you see the, well, you are moving, but you don't see yourself moving. You look around, the trees are going this way, back. How come the trees are moving? He says. And uh, in, in, in a tree which has no motion, you are seeing motion. Are you seeing or not? Yeah, I am seeing. Okay, that's one example of where akarmini karma darshanam, okay? And then he says, dureshu stiteshu navishu. Suppose you're on the shore and watching a boat or a ship far away. The ship is moving, it has picked up. They say there is some nautical miles and all. They have a separate unit for ship speed, I think. And knots and this and that, they say. And so it's moving at some knots, okay? And then, but then you're looking around there. Ship is not moving at all. Still. So just like 
their karmani akarma darshanam like that he gives the example so uh that comes as a commentary to this shloka number 18 <clears throat> and uh, so 18 is that and then 19 of course making it even clearer so jnana agni dagdha karmanam knowledge will burn away all karmas just like fire will burn everything that is there okay like that jnanam okay that jnanam is what one seeks he said then uh, another important shloka and chapter number 4 is uh, 34 tad vidhi pranipatena i mean said all this now here arjuna one must learn tad vidhi means you must go he says pranipa you must go to a teacher pranipatena with the right attitude pariprashnena sevaya having talked through all these things you must go to a teacher and ask that person the right questions like that he says but krishna is already teaching arjuna so a guru is there <laughs> so either you go to a teacher means what so now that you have come to me now you can go to another teacher okay so but here the advice is for all the rest of us and upadekshanti te gnana they will teach you what it is all about gnaninaha tattva darshinaha and so karma sanyasa versus gnana karma sanyasa that was the confusion of arjuna and uh, going to the fifth chapter he asked the same question again 51 what is it what does he say sanyasam karmanam krishna punar yogam cha shamsasi same question he asks yat shreya etayor ekam tanne bruhi surischitam fifth chapter begins with the question which says uh, hey krishna you are praising knowledge just now you said jnana agni dagdha karmanam tad vidhi pranipate na they will teach you all this he said and then now you are asking me to fight asking me to do this ghora karma okay and etayo uh, rekam tell me that which is be- the best for me like that he is saying sunischitam but then if you look at the third chapter beginning of the third chapter so jayasi chet karma naste mata buddhi janardana tatkim karmani ghore maam niyo jayasi keshava vyame shreve meva vakyena buddhi mohayasi iva me tadekam vada nischitya there also he says nischitya in 51 also he says sunischitam tell me you decide for me and tell me what is best okay and don't tell me a hey, is this is also good that is also good this is also good that's all like this if you say it's confusing you are forcing me to decide no no you decide for me yes shreya what is shreya what is good for me okay that is what he is asking so same question and therefore we said the fifth chapter by the fourth chapter the teaching is you can say complete and uh, even though even though it is tampada it's still complete the rest can be figured out but then uh, the fifth chapter becomes a summary of the second and the third chapters and so karma yoga and jnana yoga both are talked about in the fifth chapter and uh, and so the confusion stems from arjuna's lack of understanding of two things what are the two things lokesmin vivida nishta that was said in the third chapter there are two two things okay what are the two two things one is ashrama dvayam ashrama dvayam as far as arjuna is concerned two ashramas grahastha ashrama sanyas ashrama should i be a married person or should i be a sanyas this is the question okay and uh, there there is i suppose there is some choice and you can be whatever you want and you can take to sanyasa whenever whenever you want and then krishna talks about in the third chapter lokesmin vividha nishta third shloka of the third chapter right so there is there are two committed lifestyles so that committed lifestyle is what he, he didn't say sanyasa and grahastha he said what jnana yogena sankhyanam karma yogena yogina that is what he said so there only he introduced karma yoga and jnana yoga for the first time and uh, so there that is a nishtha that is a committed lifestyle independent of your ashram correct 
whether you are brahmachari or grahastha or vanaprasthi or sanyasa sanyasi it doesn't matter and so that is two fold lifestyle that krishna talked about and then there is the two fold ashram and arjuna confused the two that he took both to be identical identical means what karma yogi means grahastha jnana yogi means sanyasi therefore i want to be a sanyasi because you are praising knowledge therefore teach me and i'll be a sanyasi also like that he said time has come i think the time has come for me to be a sanyasi yeah so that is not the case and uh, then so this shloka this uh, chapter also is important it highlights the importance of karma yoga and uh, <clears throat> he tells in chapter 2 i mean verse number 2 in the fifth shloka sanyasa karma yogascha nishreyasa kara ubhav tayostu karma sanyasa karma yogo vishishya so he says he gives a, he gives a, a, a tip here an advice i suppose kind of an advice he says giving up better than giving up karma is taking to karma yoga do whatever you have to do with the right attitude karma yoga is highlighted here and then uh, why is karma yoga important well that is because in shloka number 6 sanyasastu mahabaho dukham aptum ayogatah krishna doesn't say you should not take sanyasa sanyasa is of course the end game but then dukham aptum it becomes a cause of sorrow it becomes if you take to sanyasa ayogatah correct ayogatah without the right maturity without the right you develop the right attitude and you see ishwara everywhere and then you take to sanyasa then you settle down in sanyasa otherwise sanyasa you cannot ever settle down at all the mind will be restless therefore he he he, he tells that very nicely in this chapter and uh, <clears throat> and then of course <clears throat> uh, then 5 7 etc he talks about kurvan api na lipyate kurvan api therefore it is very clear here that a uh, sanyasi a jnani continues to perform actions kurvan api kurvan is shatru so sanskrit students api na lipyate na lipyate the person does not get bound by what he or she does or what she or she gets person is freed no kartritvam ityartaha okay so that was mentioned here in the fourth chapter <clears throat> i mean in fifth chapter and uh, so he says he is cautions he cautions taking to sanyasa and uh, somebody is giving you sanyasa it's like somebody you know uh, gives a job as a professor or any other job but not qualified not fully qualified so hasn't done the proper research doesn't get the degrees are all little shaky and uh, hasn't taught much at all no its teaching experience and then one became a professor because you know you know there is there is all the goodwill is there you know, in india goodwill works a lot and uh, resume is just uh, on paper but then outside paper more things happen and so because got a job and then good university that too good university means what professors around him are all good well qualified students are also well qualified <laughs> this fellow is sitting there and uh, he is going to his life is going to be tough okay so like that it becomes <clears throat> so get your house in order first and then we will take care of sanyasa etc that is a message here and then uh, chapter 6 we just dhyana dhyana yoga ha so we saw that just recently and so here which is what he says you can look at this dhyanam as saguna brahma dhyanam or ishvara dhyanam or devata dhyanam okay all different words i am giving all meaning the same thing and so you can visualize the your ishta devata and do the dhyanam or you can use it interpret this as saguna brahma i mean nirguna brahma dhyana which means nirguna brahma one cannot think of but nirguna brahma dhyana means thinking of the 
teaching teaching of teaching asangoham 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 punah punah and nitya muktoham etc those statements which are already understood by me and that i think about so i internalize those messages so that that is what uh, uh, two interpretations of the same chapter so for all of us those who are beginning for any of us then then dhyana yoga means dhyanam is important in our life in our life of a person who is studying vedanta <clears throat> and uh, so we saw that in the sixth chapter and uh, so the first six six chapters this is how it was and uh, the first the six chapters that group is called a shakkam shakkam and uh, this is called jeeva shakkam jeeva shakkam because it talks about the jeeva and then the second group of six is called uh, the ishvara shakkam ishvara shakkam and uh, the last three is called the aikya shakkam other names are also given jeeveshwar aikya shakkam like that and shakkam means what a group of six like panchakam sadhana panchakam uh, means uh, a group of five shlokas that shankaracharya has written and then mahalakshmi ashtakam a group of eight shlokas that are there etc so like that we have the shakkam and uh, <clears throat> the main topic of course is jeeva <clears throat> and even within this we can uh, uh swami parmarthanand ji gives a different cut of it he says three topics are highlighted in this shatkam in this one shatkam the first group of six okay <clears throat> and what are those jeeva swarupam okay which means the nature of the jeeva and uh, what is the nature of the jeeva yeah, i've been thinking that i am i am as good as my body and therefore i am a mortal i am as good as my mind therefore if the mind is agitated i am agitated if the mind is sad i am sad so this is my lot and so i am i am like a yo yo and uh, then krishna says of course uh, second chapter 12 to 25 um, the nature of atma the nature of the self was was given and then again in 342 okay 342 is uh, ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಪರಾಣ್ಯಾಹು ಇಂದ್ರಿಯೇಭ್ಯ ಪರಂ ಮನ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಮನಸಸ್ತು ಪರ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಯೋ ಬುದ್ಧೆ ಪರತಸ್ತು ಸಹ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪಂಚಕೋಶ ವಿವೇಕ ಪಂಚಕೋಶ ವಿವೇಕ ಸೊ ಪಂಚಕೋಶ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಆತ್ಮ ಓಕೆ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದಟ್ body body is a grass the grass thing the most visible thing is is the annamaya kosha okay that is a technical term used we don't have to worry about it now but uh, the kosha those of you who know kosha right uh, kosha is like a covering and so it's like a sheath sometimes they translate it as a sheath and so it's like onion peel you know there are five onion peel five peels in this in this uh, in this body okay and the most external one, one is this body grass body and then like this further and further there is annamaya pranamaya prana hunger etc physiological system okay uh, and then manaha so am i annam and then am i my body no i am not my body because you know i am observing the body and i am the one who dictates what the body does body doesn't know anything and uh, it's helpless and uh, it is just there it is containing me oh okay so i am not the body <clears throat> like that i am not prana and then i am not i am not uh, manaha maybe i am the mind because mind is very subtle and whatever i think i am you know so i must be the mind <clears throat> no <clears throat> in india at least it is not true <laughs> our acharya says said <clears throat> long ago that that's not true and uh, no, you are the observer of your mind and uh, in deep sleep the mind disappears but you are still there and so therefore you can't be the mind etc it goes all the way to <clears throat> anandamaya kosha so like that there is a kosha kosha panchakam 
and so that's the 342 is uh, talking about that that is the, almost the last shloka of the third chapter and then uh, then again kartrutvam akarta look at 513 uh, 513 sarva karmani manasa sanya saste sukham vashi navadvare pure dehi naiva kurvan na kare naiva kurvan so that person navadvare pure dehi de so far i thought i was the deha deha means body dehi means i am now not the body but i am the indweller of the body i am the one who is conscious of the body I am the one who is the Satchitananda Atma that sustains the body. So if the body goes away, body can, can, can perish, but I will not perish. That is the idea there. And uh, so this is Jiva Swarupa. Okay. Swamiji said, Swamiji says there are three topics discussed in the first Shatka. Jiva Swarupa is the first, which is what we talked about just now. And karma yoga. So karma yoga, I think uh, you know very well. And it was uh, introduced also in the famous shloka in the second chapter, 47. So 247, karman yeva adhikaraste ma phale shukada achana ma karma phalahe turbuhu. You don't control what you get. But you have authority over what you do. So this buddhi, karma yoga buddhi, very critical, very important. And, uh, and often, you know, that, that they have this picture of the of Arjuna in the chariot and Krishna riding it, etc. And uh, with the Upadesha being given, and often I see that Karmanya Vadikara Sloka being, uh, you know, written at the bottom of that, or the top of the chariot. And so uh, there is a significance to that. I think that, that Sloka is so important. And uh, then, of course, uh, <clears throat> entire chapter 3 is Karma Yoga. Huh? And uh, 510 also. Brahman Yadhaya Karmani. Like that he says, Sangam Tyakva Karotiyaha Lipyate Nasa Pape. A person is not bound by either action or the results of action. Lipyate Nasa Pape. Na? And then Padma Patra Mivambasa. Like the like the lotus, the leaves of the lotus, it doesn't matter where the lotus is situated, but it is untouched by neither the water nor the slush in the water. Okay, That is the example that is given. So lotus becomes a very, so in our Shastram, lotus is always used in this context. And you see our devatas also, you know, they're seated in a lotus. And the idea is this. Padma Patra Mivambasa Na Lipyate. That's the idea. And so, of course, there are many shlokas. This just I'm giving two or three here. And, uh, and uh, the homework here is to, to take a list of all the shlokas. And then you can say, is this talking about Swarupa? Or is it talking about Karma Yoga? Okay. Swarupa means what? Nature of Atma. Nature of Atma. Okay. Swarupa is a technical word. A very technical word. Nature of Atma. See. Nature of Rasagulla is sweet. Rasagulla is sweet to taste. Okay. It's made of something, whatever. And uh, sugar, etc. Flour and whatnot. Now, this Swarupa is not like that. We do that's that's the rasagulla taste and all the way you describe the rasagulla are the qualities of rasagulla and all attributes this atma has no attribute whatsoever therefore really speaking you can't use the word nature to translate swarupa swarupa or well, somebody says gold is the swarupa of the ornament that you are wearing okay okay so that is swarupa swarupa is the content of that object, the final content, the substratum, sometimes they use the word substratum. And so that is what is being talked about, not the color and things like that. And so, so you can list all the shlokas from second, third chapter, etc. And then uh, you can say, is this karma yoga or is it jiva swarupa? They're talking about swarupa of atma. 
like that you can say and then <coughs> third thing of course is <coughs> purusha prayatna self effort very important you have to bring it out from the bhagavad gita means initiative means free will okay there's so many shlokas often they say hinduism is fatalistic correct fatalistic why because karma it's all sarpe likha hai and the two we put all these pattai also lines you know we say forehead mere sir pe likha hai and top of it we put a pattai like this. and so we make it <coughs> we confirm that idea you know this lalate lalate likhita rekha so like that they say and then kena api na uh, marjanam kartum shakyate so the lines that are written on one's forehead nobody can erase those lines like that there is a beautiful so people think like this people talk like this books write like this and it's atrocious <coughs> hey that karma i got only from free will without free will there can't be karma how there can be karma without free will it is my karma right karma is karma phalam and karma phalam cannot come from without karma karma means action <clears throat> so it just happens that i have a, i have past karma also so there is a continuity and uh, past affects the future i mean affects the present and present will affect the future therefore i have the authority karmani eva adhikarah krishna says adhikar hai karma mein adhikar hai you better you have authority and you better use it properly how do i use it properly that's why uddhare atman atmanam tere atmanam you are you are like a, you are this human being is just throbbing with free will and better use it properly otherwise you will misuse it or disuse it these are the only possibilities proper use misuse or disuse this is what will happen and so krishna is calling that and so there is no question about this this hinduism being fatalistic and all that and uh, so and then 247 not only he says karmani eva adhikara hate you have authority over action not over results results too many factors that you can't control one person cannot control all this and uh, he says that then mate sangaha astu akarman correct so he says don't be don't get lethargic don't become indifferent don't say ah sleep sleep is sushupti is just i is going to heaven so i think i am i slowly this sleep off don't do anything ye karo wo karo is become indifferent completely now asangaha mate like that he says <clears throat> so uh so very important so therefore that free will applies even at the level of the thought right watch your thoughts for they become your words right you must have heard this right <clears throat> watch your thoughts for they become your words choose your words for they become your actions okay and then that's a nice word and then uh, choose your actions for they become your habit develop your habit for or develop your habits for they become your character okay or study your habits that's a better word study your habits for they become your character develop your character for that becomes your destiny okay so very important and so at the even thought process so with vedanta what we, what happens is we come we become sensitive to all this and we we become we become true to ourselves and whatever we think also and we say no that's not the right way to think okay no i i let i can i can't do that that's how i used to think but now i have to my thought process has to be in keeping with what i have learned so far and so slowly i change my thought process also correct <clears throat> somebody is hurting me insulting me constantly how will what will what will my response be now versus 10 years ago when i was not exposed to this 
will there be a difference or not yes there will be a difference okay and uh, <clears throat> previously i used to hurt myself i used to allow myself to hurt myself and the reactions this and that now mature way of responding and lipyate so that's his problem her problem and so if he or she needs help i can help but if i have to stay away i'll stay away because i also don't want to get hurt in the process and unnecessarily you know we don't want to prolong this etc so very mature way of dealing with it and uh, <clears throat> therefore therefore free will free will question always comes up do i have free will every time here there is a verb okay another way to look at it in the bhagavad gita those of you who studied sanskrit okay every time there is a verb okay tasmad uttishta kaunteya yuddhaya krita nischaya tasmad uttishta uttishta means what get up how can arjuna can get up if he does not have free will tad vidhi pranipatena vidhi vidhi means may you know how can i know something if i don't have free will okay like this if you pick up all the verbs you can make a list of all verbs which which are command which are a command do request you can't request something you can that's why even the dog, your own pet dog okay you can request the dog to do things sit down get up get that ball this that you can so and uh, it seems to respond to you as because even that is impulsive it doesn't know much and it just you know like a like a robot it does and uh, but you take it very real and then you get upset and the dog doesn't do things you want <laughs> and then uh, so that free will is needed is very obvious here there is no question of not having any free will all my karma was gained due to my free will or no without free will there is no karma at all so <clears throat> this we have to uh recall periodically so that's another cut he says and uh, what 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 is that jeeva swarupa and then uh, karma yoga and uh, purusha prayatna okay those are the three topics discussed in this first shakta that's another way swami parmarthananda ji says that and so i wanted to share that with you <clears throat> and so with that uh, we complete the first six chapters it's uh, an important milestone no doubt and uh, then what we are going to do is we are going to enter the seventh chapter which is the ishvara shatkam correct right? tvam is over tat is going to be discussed ishvara shatkam so there will be a shift in the topic and uh, and of course it has things like bhakti yoga and then it has uh, this uh, vibhuti yoga vishwarupa yoga so bhagavan krishna showing the cosmic form the entire universe he shows and uh, then so these topics are talked about bhakti because even though bhakti is meant for the jiva not for ishvara but ishvara is there means bhakti is automatically coming so bhakti is the yoga ha there is a topic here in this uh, in this ishvara shaktam and then following that we will go to this uh, asipada so jiveshvara aikya shaktam and uh, <clears throat> there the the values are discussed for the so that equality which again maturity means to mature is discussed and some more analysis is done there and uh, and so that's the that's the progression <clears throat> and uh, this is also called prathama shatka madhyama shatka and charama shatka so these are the terms that are used to describe these sections of the bhagavad gita and uh, so what we what uh, i don't want to start chapter 7 now i you know we can uh, start from the next class onwards
So now that we have a few minutes left, I thought what we'll do is we will review the meaning of our Shanti, the, uh, the Prathana Shlokas. Okay? There was a request from Harprasadji to do that. So Shruti <clears throat> Smriti Puranana Alayam Karunalayam. Everybody has the list of Shlokas, I suppose, right? <clears throat> I'm not having that list in front of me, but <clears throat> so we start this very interesting. We start this class with a prayer to Adi Shankaracharya. Okay. The reason is we've got the Bhagavad Gita in front of us. The book is there. But then to understand the Bhagavad Gita, we need somebody to unfold the meaning of these words. And even the greatest Sanskrit expert will have difficulty and uh, will get stuck in many portions. And unless the, the, the interpretation is properly given. And so we need Sankaracharya becomes for us an important link, link between us and, and the Vedas. And uh, so therefore here, Shruti, Smriti, Purana, Nam, Alayam Karunalayam. Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankara. So Shankara, Shankaram Namami. I salute Shankara, right? And uh, Bhagavat Padam, and uh, typically it's a popular expression. So Bhagavat Padam. So the feet, whose feet I worship, I consider the person's foot, feet as equal to Bhagavan or the feet of Bhagavan. Okay, both are right, both terms are used. And I worship Shankara, whose, uh, whose foot or whose feet are Bhagavan, or who, who Bhagavad Pada, not only Shankara, but I worship, I prostrate. So uh, the feet are a symbol of uh, humility, symbol of, of that sublimation of Ahankara which is needed for the knowledge to take place. I met people who said, who said, no, I will not do namaskar to anybody. I will not do it. Like that, I mean, that, that, that attitude is there. I cannot bow down to anybody, correct? So that is only in this culture, you find all these things. You go further westward, westward. From Mumbai, you take off in a plane and keep going 100 miles, 100 miles, 100 miles, 100 miles. Keep going all the way, I land up in Chicago, and then this culture is gone. Correct? You have to carry this culture all the way in a, in a kettle or a pot and then take it there and then save it and protect it. <laughs> and so, Namami Bhagavad Padam, and like that it says. Okay. Shruti Spruti Puranana. Who is the Shankara that is described in the first line? Correct? Shruti Spruti Puranana Alayam. The alayam, abode, repository, you know, khajana, treasury. You know, I'm trying to come up with words. Alayam. Who is the treasury of what? Shruti and Smriti. There are only two kinds of texts in this world. Shruti or Smriti. That's all. One, that is Ishvara, Ishvara Dattam. And so, Apaurishayam, that which is not written by anybody. That is Shruti. And it's a revelation. Or it's written by somebody. Therefore, that is Smriti. That's all. One, you, can, you can, all, all, we have categorized the entire literature of this world. Correct? And, uh, <clears throat> of course, for us, it applies to all the Shastram that we study. Is either Shruti, which is Vedas, or Smriti, which is Bhagavad Gita, and all the texts written by various Acharyas, including Shakracharya, and including Ramana Maharshi, and many other Acharyas are there and Bharati Tirtha, etc. And so we read their texts, Ramarai Kavi and, and uh, Anandagiri and so on and so forth. And so Shankara is the authority. He is the alim of everything. Why? Because his works are so phenomenal that hundreds of scholars, hundreds of acharyas have written commentaries on him, his works and commentary on a commentary and commentary on a commentary. And Tippani, they are called Tippani. Tippanikara. You know who's a Tippanikara? 
Bhagavad Gita is there, then Shakara writes a commentary, then Anandagiri writes a commentary on the commentary, and then somebody else writes a footnotes on Anandagiri's commentary. So if we have doubt, we can go all the way down to Tippani. Often we have to do that. And uh, everybody need not do that, but at least people who are teaching, they must be thorough in all these things. Really. And that's what I'm finding. The more I study, I find my God. Otherwise, the teacher will, 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 can say things that are not right. Okay. And uh, that, that, that clarity will not be there. And how much people have given up. Research. Suppose we say here, we sit around and say, no, this, uh, this uh, COVID shield is good for you. It will help you. And it gives you immunity for some time. Six months, it will give you some immunity. After that, you have to take a booster shot. Hey, to make the statement, how much research is gone? How many people have worked on it? Days and nights. And that too, the pharmaceutical companies, they would have put a lot of pressure on their employees. You can imagine, correct? And come on, come on, come on. Now is the time to do it. Now is the time to make money and whatever. But the employee is not making money. Somebody else is making <laughs> Employee is getting a lot of, hearing a lot of. Anyway, so therefore, same thing here also. How much study has gone to to say one sentence, two sentences, to, uh, you know. Therefore, Shruti, Spruti, Purananam, Alayam. Puranas also. And uh, Purana also, uh, because Purana, what is mentioned in the, even though Shankara has not written much about the Puranas, and the values that are highlighted in the Puranas, the purpose of the Purana, role of the Purana, everything Shankara brings out in his introductions. It brings out and uh, and uh, this uh, people who, you know, Kathakaras, Purana, uh, people who tell the Puranas, you know, and uh, tell the stories. It's good to hear to hear all those stories. You know, all of us have heard that. And uh, our uh, Shringeri Acharya says, the Pura, people who tell the Puranas, Kathakaras and Upanyasakaras, they have to talk about Vedanta. They have to say. That is what happens. People listen to all these Puranas and the story of Dhruva and this and that and Rama and Krishna and then they go away. And then they don't they have no idea what Moksha is. They have no idea of Atma. Atma and Nitya is there. But what should I do? And this like Praptasya Praptihi is understood or not? Otherwise, everything is we are roaring around in the apraptasya apraptihi only, correct? Constant apraptasya prapti. There's no end to that. And so here, Shruti, Shruti, Purananam, Alayam. Karunalayam also. Karuna. Repository of Karuna, compassion, overflowing with compassion. Why? The amount of work he did. The amount of work he did in such a short span of time. And only Karuna can bring that out. Oh, people need this. The people need this constantly. It is not for my sake I'm doing it. I'm doing it for others' sake only. Means they need it. Otherwise, there's no need for Shankara to write on this. Therefore, Karuna Layam. Namami Bhagavad Padam. Shankaram. Loka Shankaram. Loka Shankaram. One Shankara. The word Shankara. Sham Karoti Iti Shankaraha. That is the meaning of the word Shankara. Sham means Mangalam. Mangalam means Kalyanam. Kalyanam means auspiciousness. Auspiciousness means what? Whatever you think is good for you, that is auspicious. Okay? Whatever I don't want is not auspicious. Okay? So Loka Shankara, because of the work he has done, because of his contribution, he is a Loka Shankara. Means he is, he is a blessing to entire humanity. He doesn't come, come around and say, no, you are, you are going to hell, so I have to save you. Or you are a pagan, you are a this worshipper, that worshipper. No. Loka Shankara. Whoever comes to Shankara, Shankara will only be a blessing because he will make me think. He will make me think and then through thinking, through thought process, through my own thinking, he will liberate me. And so, Shank that Loka Shankaram Namami. Shankaram, Loka Shankaram, Namami. 
and so very significant that we we attribute our study to shankara and uh, of course vaishnavas will attribute to ramanujacharya okay they have a similar shloka where they they worship ramanujacharya so acharyas are so important and uh, because it's more than language more than language and uh, Simply having a dictionary, we cannot figure this out. And so, our salutations to Adi Shankaracharya. And then we'll cover the other shlokas in the next class. Okay. So, we'll conclude with that. And starting next class, after some of after the introduction to these uh, Prathana shlokas, we will uh, do the Shanti shlokas. Probably the... the good part of next class will be taken up by that and then we'll take up chapter 7 okay om swasti prajabhya paripalayantam nyayena margena mahim mahishah go brahmane bhya shubhamastu nityam loka samasta sukhino bhavantu काले वर्षतु पर्जन्य पृथ्वी सस्यशालिनी देशो यम क्षोभ रिता ब्राह्मण सन्त निर्भया ओ सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंत मा कचि दुख भाग भवे असत मदगमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतंगमय ओं पूर्णमद पूर्णमीद पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओ